The 3F Morning Solution. This is the best way to improve your gut health, hormone health, and immune health. I'm Dr. Amy Shah, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Confidential, where we take you behind the scenes and give you the best medical and science info. If you enjoy this episode, make sure you like and follow below. Welcome to the three-part series. This is part one. We're going to be talking about the morning 3Fs. What even are the three Fs, Dr. Amy? Yeah, so if you're trying to optimize your gut health, your hormone health, your immune health, you should be doing these three things every morning, okay? And this is gonna be part one. We're gonna talk about all three, but the first F, you might have guessed it, is fasting. So fasting doesn't mean um, a 24 hour fast, a 36 hour fast. It doesn't mean anything but an overnight fast. So when you start your morning, you should have had an overnight fast of about 12 hours or more. So if you ate dinner at 7 p.m., that's nothing. It's like 7 a.m. breakfast, okay? So you wanna have that long gut rest, just like your brain needs rest, your gut needs rest. Now, how many hours do you think the normal American eats? I would say from the time they wake up at eight o'clock to when they go to bed at nine, so yeah. pretty much all day. Yeah, so you'd think it would be like 12 hours, but it's actually like 16 hours. There's only an eight hour break that Americans typically stop eating. And what we're learning is that circadian rhythms not only run our brain, but it also runs our gut. So our gut, about two to three hours before bed, gets the signals from our body, from our hormones, that it's time to wind down. So when you have a huge late meal meal late at night, what it does, it kind of short changes that healing process. Our body's like, oh wait, I thought we were healing. We were turning off the digestion and start focusing on healing. Now the sympathetic nervous system gets activated, meaning that you're not gonna be able to sleep well because you're sweating, you're activated, you're trying to digest all this food. And then your circadian rhythms are thrown off because we thought, oh, based on the light and based on the time, it's night. But now you're giving them a huge huge meal load and the circadian rhythms are getting mixed signals. It's like being in a very bright room late at night. It's the same kind of disturbance. So you wanna take a break from eating from say 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or even longer, like you could do a 6 p.m. to 8 a.m., like a 14 hour fast. Uh, do you fast typically? Not typically, but I'm trying to get into it. So this is really good information because I haven't done it before. So where you start? Yeah, I think um, this is such a good topic because I think most people think fasting has to be 16 hour fast or 18 hour fast or 24 hour. People ask me all the time like, you talk about fasting, but you don't even do long fast. And I don't usually do except for a quarterly fast, 24 hour fast I'll do like once a month and maybe a little bit longer quarterly. I don't really think you need to do long fast every night. If you wanna optimize your hormones, especially as women move through middle age, 40s and up, this can help you balance your hormones. This can help you optimize your immune system. This is a great way to um, improve your metabolic health. So if you're someone who wants to lean down through fasting, you do have to watch what you're eating. So it's not like you can just automatically eat an early dinner and you're going to be thin. We do know that if you eat an early dinner, um, you tend to eat less calories in the day. You tend to eat better calories in the day and I found working with people that when you eat an earlier dinner you make better choices because nobody eats healthy food after 8 9 10 p.m. yeah definitely. that's like Sweet junk food central. yeah <laughs> so eating an early dinner can be a huge intervention in getting that uh, body composition that you want and also to optimize your hormones because your hormones we want them to go in sync with your circadian rhythms and just like your gut health needs to be in sync so does your hormone health so Technically, if you're going to bed at nine o'clock, then a time to stop eating would be six o'clock. But whatever time you go to bed, just kind of work backwards two to three hours. The studies have been done around eight o'clock as being kind of the time where our insulin sensitivity goes down, our hormones are changing into kind of nighttime mode. So really trying not to have a big meal after 8 p.m. can be really beneficial in most time zones. If you're someone who works night shift, to just work backwards two to three hours before you go to bed, you want to stop eating and you want to have a 12 hour gut rest. Okay, so if I nurture these circadian rhythms, I nurture my hormones, I nurture my sleep schedule, I nurture my gut yeah. pretty much, right? Yeah, but your gut bacteria actually have circadian rhythm. So people don't even understand that these bacteria that pretty much protect our gut um, from viruses and inflammation and help 
our body communicate with each other, it has a circadian rhythm and they need sleep and they need rest. So gut bacteria are like any living things and they have circadian rhythms also. So this can be really good for people who are having digestive issues or you just want to age in a healthy way or someone who's really trying to optimize their body composition. So if you're someone who's like, I want to get into the best shape of my life, you really want to start circadian fasting is how I think of it. People often ask me like, what can you have while fasting? Um, that's a big question. Water, you can have clear liquid uh, that have no calories, like a decaf tea. You can have a decaf coffee if you'd like, but remember decaf coffee sometimes has a little bit of caffeine, so okay. it can be disruptive to your circadian rhythms. I actually, as you know, the chai latte that I make, the Amy MD Wellness type chai latte, if you use a half a scoop, that's about 35 calories. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, and hot water, that yeah. can help you. If you're someone who's getting hungry, you need something, that's something you can use at up to about 40 calories but nothing with sugar in it and you don't want to even have high protein so really really small amount so people always ask me can I have a creamer listen most creamers the way we use them are much more than 40 calories mm -hmm. and they have a lot of sugar so it's not a good thing to use while fasting the serving size is yeah like saving. have you ever measured creamer it's like one little to. spoon <laughs> is a creamer yeah so and it often even artificial sweeteners, like you're not supposed to have diet soda, for example, when you're fasting. So it's tough. Some people really find it hard. That's why I say you start with 12 hours and then move to maybe 13 or 14. Don't have to go all the way up to 16. If you want to, you can, but misnomer in the media that you need to be doing long fasts um, just to get a benefit is not true. It depends on what your goals are. If you're looking for a full reset of your cells, you may want to do a longer fast, but on a daily basis, this kind of circadian fast is a great way to start your morning so that's the first F what questions would you have if you are doing this first F program like every morning you want to wake up and you want to have fasted for 12 hours so if you wake up at 6 and you ate your last meal at 8 you probably want to wait till 8 a.m. to have your first meal and how would you suggest I break my fast would yeah. you start with water would you start with food yes so hydration is number one you want to get a big glass of water in and then the third F is actually what we're going to be talking about how you exactly break your fast. I don't want to go into full detail, but I will tell you okay. like we want to have fermented foods like a probiotic food, fiber and protein in your first meal after you break a fast. Now you don't have to do anything special when you're breaking just an overnight fast. Like a lot of people that are doing long fast, they have to start with soft or like soup like foods in the beginning because their body has been fasting for so long, but you don't have to do that with just an overnight fast. So one of the other reasons to do an overnight fast is someone who has PCOS or high insulin levels or high blood sugar they're trying to get their blood sugar down so this can all be really really helpful for all of those people amazing I guess we'll have to get into it in the next two episodes and see what else we have in store yeah three-part series so this is step one of three steps that you should do every morning this is the way to really optimize your aging your hormones and your gut health and your immune health so thanks for watching guys